All right, I said I was gonna show you guys how to shim properly, um, and I was gonna help you along. Uh, so, I'm gonna do that right now. Um, if you haven't watched my other video, you should watch that video. I'm gonna put a link right here in the middle of the video. And different from the other video, if I has chosen this other sector gear, I think it's an Aries, and I put an SHS delay clip on it. The delay clip only goes this way because it is rounded. I uh, also tested in the gearbox to make sure that the tap plate is working correctly. You can see it is rounded, so uh, you cannot put it on the other way. You, you could, I guess you could shape it to go on the other way, but this is the way it's supposed to go. Um, in case somebody asks, how does your metal SHS tap uh, delay clip go on and does it... Uh, is it? And I've been getting comments that maybe this is backwards, but it is not. It is not. So uh, don't send me any more of those comments, please. All right. So I open up the gearbox here. This gearbox shell is a GR16. No, this is a combat machine. Excuse me. This is a combat machine. We'll move this other shells out of here so we don't worry about what we're looking at on camera. Okay. We've got some pistons here. We're gonna figure out what we're gonna use. This is what's gonna be my demo gearbox. So basically, uh, I'm not going to really care what we put in there, um, but we should have the main components. Uh, basically, we will need a cutoff in there. You have to have one of those uh, when you're shimming. So um, I'm not going to worry about screwing that down. First things first is we're just going to go up and over it with the uh, sector gear, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, we're going to go ahead and put this in here. and. Looking at it, it already goes up and over it. Um, what you need to do is look at your, your uh, sector gear, hold it straight, spin it, and make sure it doesn't come down on the, uh, on the cutoff here. Now what I'm going to do is, because even though it does come a tiny bit over it, I'm going to clear it completely by putting .1 shim on the bottom of the sector here. So if I ever choose to use a cutoff, it's simply like this. It should be easy to put in. Uh, so. I'm going to go ahead and take that out and add 0.1 millimeter on the bottom here of this, uh, where are my shims, by the way, here they are. So I've got my shims here, I've got my caliper, let's get this stuff out of the way here. Alright, I want to show what I did with sandpaper and all that stuff pretty soon, so I'll leave that stuff out. Okay, so... Go ahead and find a 0.1 millimeter if I can. Let's just uh, dump out everything here. All right, so I'm gonna use this and get about a 0.1 millimeter. Make sure this is back on zero. It's all the way back, okay? So I'm gonna start grabbing here. And why don't I have these organized? Uh, this is from a mixtures of sets. And uh, when you're working kind of fast, sometimes you just throw things back in. Um, this was before I had a caliper. I've got sanding material on my fingers so it kind of makes it tough to uh, tell what I'm putting in my hand but I think this is this is uh, tinier than the last one so it should be what we're looking for okay so there's about a 0 .7, 0 0.07 maybe 0 0.08 I'm gonna put that on the bottom of my sector gear here it's on the bottom there I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here make sure it doesn't lose it See, it's got uh, better friction than just being on the, the uh, bottom cam that hits the uh, cutoff. So we're doing good here. And the top, of course, is going to have the same friction. We're very similar uh, because it's only going to be on the bearing. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that on top here. Excuse me. So it's still on the bottom. There's only 0.07, but it would be a 0.1. So we're going to go ahead and close this up. I'm just checking to see movement without without screwing it down. 
there's a ton of movement. See my finger can come up. Let's kind of zoom in here. Okay, so here's the middle. See that? There's a ton of movement. Um, from selling from that, that's a lot of movement. Let's go ahead and put uh, quite a bit here. I'm going to take one of these bigger ones, see what this measures out to be. Probably a 0 0.5, 0.3. Okay, so we got 1.3 here. Uh, let's go with another 0.3. I think all my 0.5s are gone. And probably even another 0.3. I believe this is an Aries sector gear in a GR, uh, excuse me, CM16 gearbox shell. So it's a combat machine gearbox shell. So I'm putting these all on the top here. And the delay clip is uh, flat in that area, so I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about um, uh, cutting that down to be flat so that the uh, shims are parallel on there. They're flat too, so that's all good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this back up real quick. And there's still up and down movement, see, so I, I knew we might be getting the in the one millimeter and higher. So there's quite a bit. Even if I were to screw that down really tight, there's gonna be quite a bit. I'm gonna try another 0 .3, 0 .03. 0 .3, excuse me, yeah. It's 0 0.3. So now I've got four of these things on top here of the sector gear. Still a tiny bit of uh, up and down movement. I'm probably going to go with 0.2 this time. I probably won't get a 0.2. I'll probably get a 0.15. Alright, so we've got a 0.16. Uh, we're going to put that on there. I know that's not enough. Um, let's go with trying to find one that's close to 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, that's definitely not close to 0.1. I mean, I didn't have any more of those. This one's a little bit... Let's put a 0.18 on there. So, we've got quite a bit of shims on this gear, and uh, you would necessarily not need to do that on yours because yours will be a different gear and a different um... okay so that can't move up like I was thinking point two is what we need so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off that other one put it back down for a second alright check it comes up the tiniest bit. So once I screw that down, that should be uh, really close to being already shimmed. So the sector gear is practically already shimmed, and we're going to need to check that work pretty soon. Um, first things first, I need some screws to it, this gearbox shell. Since I'm going to make this my gearbox uh, demo shell, I do whatever I want with it. I have some plans for it, um, some things that come up with ideas that might be really cool for the gearbox. Uh, let's see here, I need some screws. Got any screws, I can't make this tight and then I can't check my work. So we're going to pause for a second while I find some spares. Okay, we're uh, back and I have dremeled these screws so that I can put a flathead through it and yes, it was pretty hot. Okay, so Oh, he's still, yeah, they're pretty warm. One of them is pretty hot still. Okay, so I went ahead and did that. And just to remind what we have here, we've got this, this sector gear here with 0.1 millimeter on the bottom, what it's supposed to be. And then we've got four 0.3s and a 0.16 uh, on top of that. And on the bottom here is point, uh Instead of 0.1 millimeter, it's 0.07, I think, or 0.08. 
So now we're going to go ahead and you don't need to know that really if your gear is different because your gear is going to take different shims on the bottom and top. But you saw how I was avoiding the uh, cutoff. I went looking around and I found a better cutoff that's in good condition. I think this is a VFC cutoff, I think. I'm not really sure. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull this off. Keep all the shims on the gear, even the one on the bottom. And I'm going to put this down in here and see if I need to move some of my shims to cover the bottom. Um, it looks like it doesn't need it, but I'm going to go ahead and move one underneath. Why not? Because I have so many point threes on the top. Why don't we just take one of them? Yeah, there's so many there. We're just going to take one of them, put them on the, put it on the bottom. So we have initially what's supposed to be 0.4 on the bottom, and on the top is supposed to be uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. That'd be 0.9 plus 0.2, so it's supposed to be 1.1, uh, but it's really not 1.1 from the caliper, but. Uh, basically, I just cleared the cutoff, so it's not going to grind on the cutoff, and it's, uh, so you can even see here, the, as the gear rotates around, it sounds like it's hitting the cutoff, but the cutoff is moving up and down because it doesn't have anything uh, holding it in place. So if I was to uh, look at what's going on and hold the cutoff, uh, good. Yeah, it's totally clearing it. It's totally clearing it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pull that off. Pull this out. Set it to the side. Put this back in. Make sure it's still got the shims. Don't lose them. And we're going to screw this down and see if uh, there's any... Uh, there's a little bit of up and down movement right now, but as soon as we screw it in, that could be a total different story. So um, I wanted to do this with flatheads because it takes too freaking long to use hex. See if I can get away with this one. If I can't, I can grab the other one. Totally can get away with this one. See, that would just take way too long. I have to do it all the way there. Now initially you only have to do the three around the gear or any that are around the gear. Um, the ones that are up here, really I haven't seen them, even if I screw them they don't apply the pressure as they do down here is the main concern. Uh, so if you're really worried you can't apply those but I'm not going to because I know from my experience it really hasn't affected the gears. Alright so I go here and uh, tighten these. I don't think that one's supposed to go in there. You want to keep them uh, tightened at least. Okay, I don't think that's going to work. Maybe I should just grab a flathead that is about that size and hand tighten them. Okay, those are tight. All right, I didn't over tighten. Gear still spins without resistance. Is there any up and down movement? You can hear it. It's a very little up and down movement. We're going to be messing with 0.1 right now, or even less than that. As long as you can see it, remember the rule if you can see it, it's not tight and it will. Spin no problem. So um, we're going to go ahead and untighten this. And try to get point one underneath there. Try to undo two at the same time. Now you can 
can see why I made these for a flathead screw driver. Okay, so go ahead and put it over here. And we're gonna look for, I think this one is right here. That's exactly what I was looking for. Okay, so put this on top here. tiny bit of movement. That's with me holding it tight. So now we're going to screw it in. And it'll probably not even be there or it'll be so tiny you can't put anything anyways. So we're going to check by looking. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and screw these down again. Pretty simple. If you're if you're worried about your screw stripping, you just make better material. You don't make a different type of screwdriver necessary to use on the gearbox. You just use a better screw material, which I think GNG should have done. So you wouldn't have to use those. Okay, that's tight. Seems loose. And there is the very small amount of up and down movement. Um, Right now, it's so so small that I really doubt we can get another point .1 underneath there. <clears throat> so if we want to make this as close to possible, uh, what we would do is, I said we'd use the caliper, we would take out measurements and see if we can get closer. So if the top has, we said it has point, uh, six with a point .15, which is probably point .16 to be for sure, uh, that's close to... Um, See, 6 plus 2 would be 8. It's close to 8, but it's not 8 on top here. So what we could do is look for another shim that would give you even closer. And on the bottom, it's supposed to be 0. 0.4, but it's not. It's like 0. 0.137. So we could look for something here that equals 0. 0.4 together with the caliper. We put it in the caliper. And then we could trade them out and make this really more precise if we want to. Um, so there is very little up and down movement. But uh, that's very close to perfect right there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to check it to make sure that it is done. And the way to do that again is we got to throw this in there. And the way to make sure this is done is to uh, throw a, a cylinder in there. Because the cylinder may be bumping into this, especially like the bore sets. Uh, when they bump into this, part of the tap plate, the tap plate doesn't move freely. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take that out now. So you can see how this just takes a little bit of time. It would take a lot longer if you're using 0.1 millimeter and you just keep adding them and checking and adding them and checking. With uh, experience, you kind of know how much you need to throw on there. Of course, I can go a lot faster if I'm not talking, but if I'm not shimming with you, I guess what's the point of this video? Because I'm trying to show you I'm shimming with you, not trying to shim really fast. basically talking about everything so you understand and so you can do it yourself. So we have started with the sector gear first uh, mainly because I wanted to get the cutoff out of the way. We can start with the bevel first but uh, we're just working with the sector and then we'll work with the bevel in a minute. <clears throat> the sector will have to change a little bit depending on when we pop in the uh, spur gear. So showing this way is going to be very uh, helpful because you could start with the bevel gear if you want to first. All right, so we got this in here. We'll throw the tappa plate in there. First things we're going to see uh, right off the bat is the tappa plate. If you hold it down, does it have a little bit of wiggle room in between here? It seems to. Um, so when this is closed, it will probably have it will probably have a little bit of room for the gear, from what I can see. So if you're looking 
at your your uh, sector like this. You, know, you can see me looking at it like that, and you can see it. Then there probably is, but you need to check with having your gearbox closed. Uh, let's see if we can I'll take this crummy um, cylinder right here from this crummy. Uh, looks like it used to be for the combat machine. Maybe it was. Maybe it was for a GR16. I don't know. Uh, it's pretty gunky, but let's get this in there. Make sure it fits. It definitely looks like it fits. Okay, so we're gonna throw this in here, and we're gonna check for what I was just talking about. Now, there's plenty of room here. There's no problem here. Um, so, visually, right now, you can see there's gonna be no problem. So we just throw this out, and we're gonna throw that in by itself. And close it down. Uh, and see, see right here, even if I hold this tight, you don't necessarily have to close this because uh, you're looking for if it can move back and forth. If there's a gap between the sector, which I do see, um, and you're holding this really tight, the chances are that it's going to be the same when you close it up. Uh, but let's go ahead and check just to verify because I'm going to show it on video. I don't want to lose any shims here. So this is upside down. And even upside down, we see that there's a very, 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 very tiny gap. So it's like 0.1 millimeter. Visually, I can see that uh, that little tiny gap. Once you do this more often, you can actually tell. I, I don't know, some people can't, but I can actually tell uh, what size the shims are. Um, I mean, I'll, I won't be 100% correct every single time, but uh, very close to correct every single time. I mean, just touching the shim, feeling the shim. That's not 0 0.02 there, that's 0 0.1. This is more like 0.2, which would probably measure to 0.15. I mean, that's things that you know just from doing it so often. Your experience kind of kicks up. And again, we kind of saw that because I just went really fast in adding shims. Uh, on the top of that sector, I just went boom, I'll just add this, I'll add that. I knew it was going to take a lot. I'm not going to waste a lot of time by trying to figure out, okay, is it too tight now? No, just keep adding them. Just keep adding them. All right, so we got this uh, back closed down. Got the front closed down. Okay, so they're they're tight, and the gear moves no problem. Still, there is enough clearance for the sector and the tap plate. So move this back a little bit, just to show that I'm totally checking it there, and I'm totally looking down the uh, hole here into there. And if you see a tiny gap between the sector and the tap up uh, arm then uh, you're good to go. This is definitely good to go. Uh, there's going to be no pressure there. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. And for the most part, I say the most part because we haven't done the spur gear yet, the uh, sector is done for the most part. So the only other thing we'll have to check is the spur gear hitting into it. So we got that out pretty easy. Really like that I use flat heads. It's a lot easier than use hex. I do have Allen keys, I guess you call them Allen keys. Uh, but still, even when they're separated and you're still turning them like this, it's still a pain in the ass. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and do this here. All right, turn the gearbox shell over, flip it up. Bam. Take this out. Alright, we're going to take this out, set it to the side. Carefully keep all the uh, shims on it. Don't put it near any motors or anything, anything with magnets. Um, so I put it down. And that one's good, pretty much good to go. Alright, so let's start out with the bevel gear here. Mine has the hole dremeled off here, like I showed in the other video. 
uh, please watch that video if you haven't you, and you're shimming this you may not understand some of the things that I'm going over um, so uh, also this gearbox shell with uh, here's the two pistol grips these are the same pistol grips if you notice one is uh, shaved down and the other one isn't um, just to kind of clarify uh, I don't usually use this method but this is for my demo box gearbox so clarify I usually use the non uh, um, what do we call it sanded down one and to do this I will we'll show in a minute but this one I'm using and this leaves no gap between the gearbox and the uh, pistol grip when it's in the body so there is um, uh, a problem here is what they, they ha how they created this was this was too much material and so when this is on here uh, the, it could not bond the bottom of this to the gearbox shell so there would be a gap uh, and that would cause uh, some issues with the motor the motor's pinion not being in there correctly so I have uh, sanded it down pretty well pretty evenly so um, the way you do this is you have the gearbox shell in here and uh, you pin it in so that it's in there good and straight and you put this on and you ch and you sand the top very slightly just keep going and the edge here and then the, this side too so uh, it fits in there because it's basically taking uh, more material from the top but some from the edge here and a little bit from the front um, so that it comes down in there so once you see it actually start to go in there and you can see that the gap is pretty much gone I also used a, um, a flat head and kept trying to slide it in there to see if I could and then I couldn't and the back sometimes you wonder if it's a little bit there so I sand down a little bit more uh, to make sure that it's cleared so I can see a little bit of the gearbox um, almost all the way around which means that this is definitely good enough now. Now, if you don't want to do any sanding and you and you want it to be the way it was made, uh, this is how I do it for everyone else's gun, if, especially if I'm working on something. I don't actually sand it down. Uh, what I do is I put the gearbox shell in here, put this on, and I can see there's a gap between the shell and uh, this area. So I use a screw in here and I put uh, shims on top of it. Here's the the shims I've kept them in this little bag now so uh, I know that gapping and I'll put uh, a screw there with the shims on top and I check to see if that gap is correct and uh, if it is the way you can tell is if you have too many shims the uh, pistol grip will come a little bit further away from the body it'll be like this and that will actually uh, let you know they have too many you keep removing until you get real close that you'll keep so that you can put the body away and just use the uh, gearbox shell with your pistol grip and, and the shims and you'll copy that but for this case in point I've already made one that is uh, sanded down so we're going to use this one if you did plan to go with this and you do have the shims on here you probably will have to cut the spring, the spring to your motor now the reason I say that is because uh, if this is too much uh, too long this actually won't go up that high so when you sand this down you don't have that issue uh, because you're just making it mesh perfectly you don't need those uh, you don't need that extra height that you have to worry about here all right so we're going to go ahead and open this up throw down the bevel gear in here and it would go down this way in this side of the shell and we're not going to use this method we're actually going to use my method or I, I guess this isn't really mine, it's just my way of doing it. Um, it's not claimed by me. So we just go close this up here and we're gonna use the peephole. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, first find out the, the clearance of room. So we throw this bevel in here and I know there's gonna be some up and down movement already. Um, I'm gonna throw a number out there, let's go with 0 0.6. So I'm gonna look for 2.3s here. Uh, this is not even close. Um, do we have any left that are like that? Uh, there's one right there. This probably is a 0.3. There's 0.3. Okay, so we need one more. If we have one more. Now we're going to be splitting them up so we don't necessarily have to use another 0.3. Um, let's go ahead and grab two of these. 
try to get some point fifteens, maybe some point twos. Okay, so there's point eighteen. Uh, this one seems really tiny. Yep, it is. I was afraid that was going to happen. Another seems really tiny. Tiny. Actually, this one. This one is tiny, but it doesn't feel tiny because it's a little bent. You gotta be kind of careful of that. That is tiny. <laughs> is there any here that are not tiny? Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna put these on here. All right, we're gonna check. Alright, so you see I'm going to grab my tool here and uh, use gravity and push up and down. There's quite a bit of movement. Um, probably going to try to throw on another heavy one here. This doesn't look like a point three. It's another point two. Closer up. There's the tiniest bit of up and down movement. It's very tiny. Uh, so once we tighten it up, that will probably be gone. Okay, so um, I don't actually remember how many I put on there. I know there's a 0 0.3, 0 0.2, another 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and maybe a 0.15, I'm guessing. But uh, again, those aren't exact. So there's quite a bit in this uh, shell with this type of gear. And I don't think that, that's a, I think, original GR16 gear, and this is a CM16 gearbox, so. When you mesh, when you when you're messing with uh, different brands, there will definitely be uh, different um, different amount of shims that you really need. Sometimes you don't need any. Sometimes you need a lot. Sometimes you need barely any. So, uh, in cases that they match brands, they usually barely need any or none. Uh, so, okay, so put that in there. Um, we should tighten it down real quick after we uh, guess how many we're going to put on the bottom here. Um, I'm going to go with, take, uh, let's take two of these and measure that real quick. So we get both these on here. So we're putting about 0.40, yeah, 0.40 on the bottom from the top. On top we have, looks like uh, 0.2 times 2 and a 0.3. So that's uh, supposed to be 0.9, right? 0.4 plus 0.3, no, that's 0.7. I don't know what I was thinking there. Okay. So go through ahead and put those on the bottom. And now we're going to tighten this up and do two things. One, we're going to tighten it up to see if it can move the way it's supposed to, so it's not too tight. And we're going to uh, attach the pistol grip so we can get the motor in the correct position and not have to adjust it ever after that, really. 
I mean, I have a tool to check and adjust just by tiny turns. But uh, of course, video, we're not going to do that. The very end result. This is a demo gearbox, and I don't have. I don't think I have a, a, s a switch yet or a trigger assembly. So um, I have to wait to get one of those. I don't even think I. Ha I think I have extra trolleys, but I don't think I have the switch assembly to uh, put in there. If I did, I could just. Uh, solder on some wire and solder and make some motor uh, terminals to it so connect some motor terminals to it which I had done recently with my SIG alright time to tighten these down tight Tight. Tight. Uh, I keep forgetting we're checking bevel. I saw the bevel move back and forth by itself like that. That means that uh, it's not too tight. So there is a tiny bit of up and down movement. You might be able to get away with maybe half of a point one. Yeah, half of a point one before it's too tight. So I think if I put point one on top there, it would be a uh, too tight. So you might be able to get away with that, but uh, we're going to go ahead and check the uh, pistol grip. Oh, dang. I need some screws for this, and so I have to look for spares. Uh, we're going to pause the video so I can find some spares. Okay, after spending a long time looking, I finally found an extra pair and another extra pair, and who knows what these go to, so hopefully they work for this. I think this is a CM16, I'm not really sure, but I think so. Uh, M plate, um, and here's the pistol grip again. And then I found a VFC pre-cut uh, shaft spring. Hopefully it goes up to the, what we need. So I can always put a little spacer, if, probably if we need to somehow. Um, so we're gonna use this type of motor. We're gonna go ahead and uh, start putting things together. So back to where I left off. Hopefully we can get these parts to mesh. Um, if not, well, kind of screwed. <laughs> We're gonna need a different type of screwdriver here. Like this one. And these look good. I think these are VFC screws. It, I've never had VFC screws strip on me, so. Um, but in general, I'm very careful with screws anyways. I always go backwards first to make sure they click in and then go in. These screws are painted over so they don't actually uh, stick to my screwdriver even though it's magnet. Oh my god. You know what? I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna try to show this on camera because it's so hard to show on camera. Now I've got the screw right here where it's locked in place. Come on. There we go. Okay, so just I'm just gonna do this this way. You can see this is a lot easier to do with uh, without wires. With wires, it's a little bit tough, tougher to do because you have to keep putting them on. They kind of wear out as you do this. So I usually just remove the whole wiring uh, set. Make sure I'm using the right pistol grip. Yep. Hate to screw on the wrong one. Next thing to do is make sure that these are flush to the gearbox shell or the to the pistol grip, excuse me. You definitely do not want to over tighten them. Make sure you're uh, Pistol grip is on there straight. I 
kind of a thing to note. When you look at them, uh, you want to check to make sure that they don't hit your uh, bearings and bushings. And this doesn't, but um, it seems crooked as I look at it. So it seems because you got to use one eye and check it, uh, but it, it is not crooked. Check inside, it looks perfectly circular. So, all right, so we got that on. Let's light this motor up. And I'm going to look through the peephole here, if we can get the motor to come up through there. This uh, pistol grip and um, end plate must have been used. It's already at the right height, just about. Let's go up just a little turn. Um, so we'll go ahead and close this up. It looks like on this one I'm gonna have to use hex, so I'd have to take more time to Dremel again. And right now, I'm in the middle, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this with hex. And I don't even know yet if these fit, so I need to make sure they fit first before I even do any dremeling on them. It's not even that much of a turn to uh, put them on, so I'm not even going to worry about using flathead. that much and it locked in place. Let's see. Okay, so that is flush. Um, let's go ahead and look inside the gearbox here. And you may need to use a flashlight if you want to. Um, it's almost all the way up. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. light I can actually see what I'm doing differently. Let's get a flashlight. I'm going here. A really big one. It's a little bit too high actually. good. Just checking the back end. Checking the uh, checking the teeth to see how it goes in there. No, it's good. Okay. All right. So see if we can kind of get that on camera. <sighs> check back at the other video to uh, see how it's supposed to mesh in there, but I have used that to mesh it. And uh, what we're going to do here is the test that I do with a screwdriver here. And it doesn't move very well. If I put that 0.1 millimeter on top, it doesn't move very well. Now if I hold up the bevel, and I go like this, it moves pretty good. That's what this is the kind of movement we want to mimic. Let's see if I can zoom up here and get that on camera correctly for everyone to see. 
So I'm hold the bevel gear up, and you can see that's the kind of uh, play we want. So I'm going to put a 0.1 millimeter on the bottom of the bevel, and I'll push it up. See, there's a little bit of room here. It might be more than 0.1 millimeter, but we're going to push it up a little bit. And then we're going to have this kind of play, and that's the kind of play we're actually looking for. So that would be pretty much uh, spot on. Let's zoom out and go ahead and do that then real quick. All right, so first thing is we undo the pistol grip. real quick. Nothing comes out slanted. You would not want to do that. You're stripping your screws and then you start creating problems. So this spring on top of this uh, motor is going to work. And while we are opening this up, I'm going to actually check the sector real quick with the. Uh, trigger that we're going to use. Well, remember, when we're shimming, we want to make sure it's free-flowing so that it hits into nothing. That the gears hit into nothing and that every component inside the gearbox is moving the right way. Got hiccups, great. That's all you need while making a video is to have hiccups. Thank you for putting these on the opposite side, G and G. I don't know why you did that. Why you put screws on the opposite side just mystifies me. I'm trying to be different. Okay, so let's get the caliper out. Let's take one of these. There's .16. bottom and we closed her up and check again but let's go ahead and check the sector gear again make sure not to lose any of your shims so I can see what I'm doing And we can see it's impossible for the uh, trigger to get in the way. It's just impossible. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. So we have checked that. Clear my conscience here. Just trying to make sure everything is double checked, or checked at least, so we don't have an issue at all. Let me do this. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take this and uh, close it up. First thing we'll check is see if the bevel can move at all. Make sure it's not too tight.
really see the gear moving back and forth, but it probably will once we check it. It can still go up, but it's only in the center of the bearing is it moving up, so that usually means the bearing is moving because you're pushing it. It can't go up anymore with shims. Or can it? You need to look from this angle and check your uh, bevel gear. It can, but it's so tiny. So I probably don't want to do anything about that. Alright. Uh, let's go ahead and put the pistol grip on and screw it up and check it. up and down. So you can't, when you're installing, uh, you're not going to have a, especially when you put on the wires, it's not going to be going to the right height that it's supposed to. This would be a lot easier if you have a lot of brands that, uh, or if the whole gun is the same brand, because you wouldn't be checking your trigger, you wouldn't be checking uh, quite a bit of other things. The pin sometimes going into the gearbox, I like to check that to make sure it's not hitting the spur gear. Man, whoever screws these are, they are good, especially the ones inside the pistol grip. I think they're VFC though. I think they went to my BFC gun before I switched the pistol grip out. And the pistol grip needs special screws for the inside. Alright, that is on there stiff. Now to check this. If you're ever installing a weak spring to your pistol, uh, to your to your motor, excuse me, you want to make sure that the uh, the uh, motor's in the exact same position as before, so I'm looking at the, the pinion right now. And this does, this does not look like we can put any more shims and go up any higher. But we still don't get this, the movement that we I would prefer. We only get that movement if we move it up higher, so um, the movement I prefer is probably going to take Probably soon another 0.1 to 0.2, probably a 0.15 uh, right in between. So we're going to have to basically take some from one side and move to the other. So let's undo this real quick. I know this is a long process, but that's just what happens sometimes. This is why when you take your gun and you ship it to somebody to have it repaired and 
either takes a long time. I usually get this done within a few hours, uh, but I gotta find a lot of different parts and stuff to go for this demo gearbox. Do whatever I want with it. Usually, why a lot of uh, technicians don't know what the hell they're doing of putting your gun together the good way. So, they don't do all this. Make sure everything's free flowing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take something from the top here. Just take this one and put it on the bottom. I'm going to check to see what that is. So we probably have a 0.3 to 0.2 on top, so this looks like another 0.2. It's actually going on the bottom here, or something less than that. Alright, so we're going to put that right there. Close her up and check it again. It's basically the process. So I'm probably going to fast forward on some of these parts. Just because it is so time consuming on the screwing it. We're almost done. All right, time to check her. Run a check. And as I'm running the check here, happening is the screw in the bottom of the plate is moving a little bit. Okay, that's still way too tight. Let's check the, check the motors in 
position. Some reason, for some reason, the uh, motor this pinion is pushing up the bevel tighter than before, and I have noticed it just now, which means it has started to happen somehow. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, that's at the proper meshing point. So what am I going to do now? Um, need less shims on top. Still need less shims on top. So we need to undo this, get back inside, and take off something. I'm probably going to be extreme and take off the point three after what I'm seeing here. It's really strange. Usually when something like this happens, uh, it's like the motor is not uh, in the same exact spot or something, it's not as flush. The screw's not flush. See this can move a little bit too, so that shouldn't affect it though. Just checking. Alright, let's undo this and do what I'm saying. Let's check now to Yeah, something with the motor when it went in. Well, let's go ahead and do what I was saying, so um, we'll do this. Set that aside, open this up. Open her up again. Got the hiccups for sure. Okay, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to put on the bottom here. I think this point three. I'm going to take and put on the bottom. So this should be point two on the top here, close to. That should give us plenty for avoiding the shell. Um, always best to check. This is going to be a great part to show. Uh, maybe we should stick with the point three on top. 
let's go ahead and put the point two on top and see what happens. See if we can avoid shell grinding. Definitely will not be a good idea to have point two uh, on top here. So we are stuck with probably using point three or point four. So let's go ahead and check. Point three should be okay. Um, the only grinding is when it starts to slow down because it's hitting the edges. But point three should clear it. And there's a tiny bit of grind. So what we're gonna do here is um, take this and chop it up. Chop it up. So we have 0.18. We need two that are in between there. There's a 0.9. So we're gonna put that on the bottom. Grab another one here. 0.8. Put that on the top here. So I have divided the shims up. Oh, that's way better. See? That's why you check. That is way better. So that is the most shims we can have on the, uh, the least amount of shims we can have on the on the top here of the bevel. Um, so we're going to go ahead and flip it over. So on the top of the bevel is the least amount that we can have. And this is the most amount we can have on the bottom. Still spinning after I closed it. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and close her up. And at this point, if the if the uh, if this is at the proper spot. We're just going to have to go down. So kind of, let me show what it looks like right now inside the uh, gearbox. Kind of get a little bit better talk about here. We'll spring off here. So we've got it right now inside the gearbox like this. Okay. So the problem is, we've got it at the right spot. Problem is, it's still pushing the, the uh, bevel into the uh, body a little bit. Gearbox shell, excuse me. And because of that, uh, we're going to have it um, not parallel. So what we need to do in this case, since we can't put any more uh, shims on the on the bottom, this would be the bottom of the bevel. We can't do that because it would grind the top here into the shell. We can't do that. So the only option we have is to move the motor down a little bit more, and that would be our best position. Does that kind of make sense? That's all we can do. Uh, so, unless we were to take this and uh, do some modification to the pinion, but I, I usually don't prefer to do that, um, just to kind of keep it at the same height. What that would mean is like you, you uh, grind off a tiny bit off this, but that's usually not a good idea. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with the way we should be doing it. Um, go ahead and put the sump back on here close her up and screw it down and then show what we are going to have to do. And then we can move on to the spur connecting them both and we will be finished. Because connecting them both is not very time consuming at all.
friends is calling me. We'll have to call him back. Um, so we'll go ahead and put this in. Make sure the spring is staying on there. Is this what I was using? Yes, it was. Shoot, I can't get seem to get these in now. There we go like that. All right, so it's flush right here. This is my friend. I'm off to call him back. Uh, okay, we oh, we check now. The bevel goes back and forth. That's as much as I want right there. That's perfect. See that? That is perfect. Um, so turn it a couple times. Recheck. Perfect. So we are done with the bevel. We're going to move on to the spear, the spur gear, excuse me, and be completely finished. I'm going to call my friend back real quick before we go to that. So I'll be right back.